Okay, this is the day two recap. I played a bunch of games and hit 2400. A bunch of them were against Wesley So GM, and most of those were with openings that I am not particularly invested in checking again. But uh, we will skim through and look for things to improve on. Um, so we're only looking through games I played in my second session today. So it should all be within the last hour. I'm just opening a million tabs right now. Apologies, that must be boring to watch. But you get to see such exciting names as Dr. Frunkterstein, who beat me twice. Did I open both games correctly? Yes, I did. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So this game against Wesley SoGM, uh, he played this weird E6 system. Probably not a real thing, not going to worry about it. This one, he played two bishop h3, not a real thing, not going to worry about it. Um, in this one, of course, the best move is c takes b5. But even this position, like, I'm regaining the pawn. Um, for instance, e6 is already kind of forced because I threatened queen b3, forking um, mate on f7 and b7. So white gets a nice position very early, not too worried about that one. Um, I do need to figure out what I'm doing against ready type stuff. So I'm going to go to the opening stuff and I'm going to make a new section, black versus other, and list ready as a line that I need to cover. Uh, ready, work on this. Don't have a prepared line there, so that's a hint for me to come back later and find one. Um, this game, obviously offbeat nonsense. This game, uh, double fianchetto type ready. That will be included in ready stuff. All right, so we have an exchange slav. So this is the first time we've seen an exchange slav. So I will put this next to exchange QGD. Hopefully these recaps are interesting. I have no idea. To me, they're like they're the part where the learning happens, right? They're the part where I see new ideas, where I try to internalize them. Uh, we're not getting there through a D4 move order. Um, and where hopefully actual learning occurs. CD5, D4, and here they started knight f6, bishop f4, and they played this early bishop g4. And I thought b7 is a weakness, so let's turn on the uh, computer. And indeed, queen b3 is quite reasonable. And on queen b6, I am supposed to take... And then I... yeah. So I played f3, but really the knight's going to belong there. Um, so even playing knight f3 first, I can play knight b5, rook a5, e4. Four? That's very interesting. H4 is a move that makes no sense to me. So I would think like e3, bishop b5 check, knight f3 to e5, that all makes sense. Um, h3 makes sense to precede anything. I do wonder how knight b5 works. Can we just like win on the spot? Knight b5, knight a6, rook c1. Uh, they are very tied down. They can play e6 there and try to get in bishop b4 soon. Not sure that's amazing. I'm so confused by this h4 in the third line. So what if we just play e3? e3, e6. This should be 5 check. There's a line like this somewhere else, knight c6. And, you know, white definitely has a slight edge, and there are a bunch of ways to play it. I remain confused. Oh, h4, the idea is f3, g4, trapping the bishop. Okay, that's not so ridiculous. I'm not sure why it took so long to see that. But white has a nice position. And I'm not sure what the follow-up should be, which means I'm going to delete the move knight c6 and give the eval here, because I like ending after a move for the uh, the color whose side we are. So I think white has a nice advantage there. Um, typically, as we saw in the game, this, um, this b6 pawn can prove a real weakness, and it's very annoying for them to defend. And I think these structures are pretty good for white. Uh, so I feel good about that one. Here was another against a weird e6 system, so apparently I do see it a lot. Um, but that is very strange. So we got a triangle with an early bishop g5. So we go to uh, black first 1d4, triangle system early e4. This isn't really triangle system early e4. This is, we'll make triangle system various. This will be like a sideline in it. I like having more separate chapters than putting everything in the same chapter, because when I look at a chapter, I don't want it to look like a, a mess of 30 different lines that all, you know, have different reasons behind them. I'd like to uh, separate as much as I can into uh, 
you know, distinct things to look at. So I play bishop g5. And here, the computer wants me to play bishop e7. But I don't always love trading that pair of bishops because um, often e4, e5 comes and then knight e4 to d6, and it's nice to have this bishop on the board. It also is a potential pinner of the knight. So is f6 so wrong? Apparently, ah, bishop d2 is very useful. So this is a mistake. Okay, and the reason is um, in the main line of this, right, they play a4, I play bishop b4, they play e3, attacking the pawn, I play b5, bishop b4 was needed to pin the knight, so they only have one attacker on b5 rather than two. But if I give them bishop g5, f6, bishop d2, so I'm actually going to give f6 a question mark and bishop d2 an exclamation mark, because I think this is useful to have in my notes. Um, white gets bishop d2 for free, essentially. Um, well, they get it in exchange for f6. Huh. So b5, a4... I can play b4. So I can't play bishop b4 anymore because I don't really have the pin. Mm, but I never like the positions after b4. So yeah, I think this is a serious problem. And I think white has a serious advantage at the end. So I don't want to be playing f6 there. And I've often off automatically played f6. Knight f6. Okay, so let's look at this. So if we trade bishops, we take back knight. Interesting. Can take back either way. So let's say queen takes back. Can be nice when the knight comes to f6. Ooh, but the knight's going to get chased on f6. Let's say play e4. So let's try knight e7. a4, and we don't have b5. So instead, we need knight d5. Now, if they take, we're solidifying. If they play e4, we take, take, and then have b5, right? And if they play something like e3... We can play b5, because if they take, we then insert knight c3, and we achieve b5. So the key move is knight d5 in this line. And I should write a note so I have a chance to remember it. When we don't have bishop b4, we need another way to attack the c3 knight. to reduce their control of b5. Therefore, knight xc7 to d5 is the path available. And so this is the kind of reasoning I try to do when I don't understand something, is I try to, I look through some of the lines, I try to come up with an explanation, and then I, it's very important, I think, to write down that explanation, otherwise it doesn't have a good chance of sticking. And I do not want to play f6. Um, Bishop d2 is useful to them. It's more useful to them than f6 is to us. That's the bishop b4 pin. Uh, so in real life, I've only faced people who have played something like bishop f4 or bishop h4 here, and then knight e7 to g6 or knight e7 to f5 quickly comes, and I've always felt that was comfortable, so I've liked playing f6 here. But it is important that in this specific position, that doesn't seem to work. That's very interesting. So we learned something. Um, now we had this two knights, but they played this early d4. This caro can two knights. Um, so I guess I need a new chapter. Caro can two knights. Now the caro can two knights can exchange quite a lot. Uh, oh, sorry, can um not exchange, uh, transpose quite a lot. Uh, of course, they don't play d4, they're playing the two knights. Because after um, takes, takes, when I play knight f6, if they take on f6, we transpose. But instead, they play queen e2. I took, they took, I play knight d7. Queen d5 is the other way of playing it. Bishop c4 is the main move here. And my idea is knight f6, knight e5, threatening mate, e6, queen has to move, and then b5. I think black's okay here. Uh, but this player played d4, knight f6, and then where'd they bring the queen? e2, and I played bishop f5. Maybe bishop g4 is better. 
So I thought bishop f5 made sense because they don't have bishop d3, which is the standard way of them trading off my bishop if I get it out. Interesting, Mamajarov has played this position. Uh, well, we should almost certainly do whatever Mamajarov did, and he did bishop g4. But in fact, the bishop's not coming to d3 either way. The queen's in the way. The bishop's probably coming out this way with the queen here. So bishop g4 might put a little more pressure on that. For instance, if they go g3, I can just take and grab d4. And if they go bishop e3, probably got the bishop out in a useful way. Queen a5 to h5 is very interesting. Queen d5 is interesting. So in human games, c3 has been the main continuation. I'm going to erase these extra lines. Um, but I'm going to say threatening bishop f3 and queen d4. c3 has been the most common move. And then Lama Jarov and others have played queen d5. And we're going to force a weakness in their position. And black is slightly better. So bishop g4 is kind of immediately forcing. Bishop g4 threatens the d4 pawn and threatens queen d5 and bishop x f3. Okay, again, learning things. And I probably won't remember it the next time I see it, but two more times seeing it, I might. So okay, we got the main line of the Mechanus Carl. So that's gonna be in the Knight of 6e6 chapter. And we got d5, takes, takes, e5, and we got knight e4, which is the move played most, though I see d4 more, I think. I played knight f3, and the computer likes d4 more, but I've been more comfortable with knight f3. Um, I think you sometimes want to keep the option open of d3. They played knight c6, and here, oh, I forgot, there's bishop b5 ideas. Yeah, because there's lots of stuff for bishop b5, you take c6, and you have queen a4, four king, c6, and e4. Um, yes, I want to be playing bishop b5 here. Um, and so, for instance, there's, um, there's some way for them to blunder immediately, like bishop f5, maybe, no? All right, so, like, bishop e6 is probably a bad move, right? Okay, a little bad, but I'm not rushing anything. But I do want to play bishop b5. Um, and uh, I will come back to it later when I next get it. But we're going to start with bishop b5 there. All right. Um, yep, we need something to do against Catalans without an early c4. So I'm going to make a chapter. Catalan without early c4. Work on this. So of course, for black. Uh, where someone plays d4, knight f3, g3, bishop g2. I have no line whatsoever there. It kind of sucks to commit to both e6 and c6, because c5 is my break. So that's a problem line. Definitely needs to be fixed up in the repertoire. Um, don't need to work on knight c3. Not fussed about it. And here was another um, early knight f6, e6 against my c4. And this time they did not play d5 or c5, and I think you have to play one of those two moves here. So they played uh, bishop b4, and e5 is very strong. The knight has to go to g8, um, and then I play queen g4, and this pawn's very awkward. Instead they took, and after knight e4, queen g4, uh, white is winning. So I feel good about the opening of that one. Nothing too, too deep to look at there. Beat a 2200 and, you know, six moves. So another exchange QGD. Ah, well, not this one, but the other one was interesting. This one I just hang a piece because I was pre-moving too fast. Um, so here we had a Kyres, right? We had that um, that C6 idea, but we did have it delayed a turn this time. They played Knight F6, we played G3, and then they played C6. And you always want to meet c6 with knight f3 or d4. Point to d4 is your queen's going to be stable on the central square when they don't have knight c6. I was talking about this in an earlier video today where you kind of don't want to bring your queen out in the opening, but that's because there are so many pieces that can attack it, and anything that's less valuable will chase it away. If the queen can find a stable home, then suddenly bringing out the queen early is great. The queen controls a lot of squares. Um, I wrote a blog post about this once because someone wrote an article saying, bring your queen out early. And I thought it was a really poor article, to be honest. Um, for instance, in the opening example, it showed this side won bringing their queen out early, but the other side brought their queen out earlier. It was, in fact, an example of the side that brought their queen out first lost. It was one of, as many examples are, um, someone makes a blunder, and the punishment 
is a queen coming out? And you can think there are all kinds of examples, like there are times when a knight takes on e5, and queen a5 check wins the knight. You know, lots of times when someone makes a tactical blunder early, bringing the queen out is the punishment. This is not an argument for, like, bring your queen out early while developing. It is an argument for find tactics, you know? And then a bunch of the other examples were ones where, yes, the queen came out early and was strong, but that was because it had a stable home, and the article never figured out the reason it can come out early is because there's a stable home. A move like c6 is a sign that there could be a stable home because suddenly the knight can't reach its natural square, and that's often a square that can harass the queen when it comes to d4. So it seemed to me it really missed the, um, the point. I think my line here was knight f3, e4, knight d4. I believe queen b6 is a main move here, but also d5. No, actually, sorry, my line here was d4. I, I think both moves are good, but I like d4 a little more. It makes a little more sense to me. Just bring the queen to d4. There's an early queen b6 idea for black and knight a6, bishop c5. I don't remember it well, but I'll play a d4 next time here if I remember. Um... Okay, this was a game that went very badly. So we had my standard sort of Maroxy type thing. We had an early queen a5. Interesting. So we got standard position. And here, right at the moment when I wanted to play b3, we saw queen a5. Oh no, it was moved later. I castled first. We get d6, castles, and now queen a5. And the question is what to do when I can't play b3 without hanging the knight. So I played bishop d2. Um, is there any real alternatives? There is knight d5 immediately. That's kind of interesting, because um, once we trade the pair of knights, they're bishops on b2, but bishop d2 comes with tempo, so I have time to defend it while still getting the bishop out. Um, so that's an idea, but if we were going to play more typically, queen h5, and now e4. I played e3, but this makes more sense. This is going to be a better endgame with a bit more space. Uh, yeah, e3 was a bit passive, but e4 grabbing space, yeah, I think that's a solid improvement. Okay, uh, I have a, a suspending program on, so my computer doesn't run out of RAM. Um, don't know what to do against the Panov. I played bishop e6 here, which is a move, but I'm going to have to look at the pan off separately. Um, this is, again, Catalan, where they don't do an early c4. Not really sure what I'm doing there. Uh, we get the mighty Karo. Oh, we haven't added an advanced Karo yet. That's curious that I haven't seen a single advanced Karo, because that's a very common and probably the critical line against the Karo. So I'm going to make this a various chapter because they did not play um, they did not play critically here um, because the main two moves are in this position. One moment. After c5, so you'll see the main moves bishop f5, but uh, c5 is the I don't want to learn theory move. Uh, bishop f5, white can play the short attack with knight f3, bishop e2, bishop e3, off a knight d2 to b3. Um, there's various versions of that. Uh, against bishop f5, white can also play the caveman attack with knight c3 and h4, or with knight c3 and g4, either way chasing the bishop and being very annoying. There are knight e2 to g3 lines. There's all sorts of stuff. So I'm just settling for c5. I know it's supposed to be clearly a bit worse. You'll see black's percentages here are not great. Um, black is scoring, you know... 42.5% against dxc5, and even worse against knight f3. Um, black normally scores around 46%. So these are not good numbers, but it's a lot easier to learn. So the main move is dc5. Um, against c3, we can often get a French where black has not yet played e6, so the bishop can escape before e6 is played, and that often leads to a better French. But knight f3... I forgot, am I supposed to take on d4 or just play knight c6? Not sure. Looks by results like cd4 does a little better and the computer likes it a little more, but knight c6 might just transpose to other stuff. However, I am playing against dc5, I am intending e6. So if we play knight f3, knight c6, and they take, am I ruining my own opening plans? I'm not sure. Um... So, okay, what happens if I take on cd4? I just take. 
cd4, knight d4, knight c6. Ah, uh, there's c4 stuff. Okay, so this is something I should specifically look at. I'll leave a note, look at knight f3. And there is one more game to check. So I will check that one last game. We got this exchange QGD, right? This one was interesting. Um, so we can go to the analysis board. And I played knight e2. I played h3. Uh, knight, uh, they played g6, which is a little weird. I castled queenside. Maybe I can just castle kingside here, but... Huh. Hates castling queenside. Black gets their activity fast here. Now, it often hates castling queenside in this line, but why would g6 specifically dissuade me from castling queenside? I don't know. So let's stick with it. Knight f8, g4, knight e6, bishop h4, knight g7, uh, knight g3, okay, b5, king b1, bishop d7, f4. Wow, the computer's changing a lot, like plus 0 0.7 down to minus 0 0.4. Uh, bishop e6, and now I am crushing with f5, and then bringing rook to the f-file. So I played well so far. Ah, g5, f6, of course. Um, yeah, and e4 also is good. Okay, uh, not going to really put that in because I am um, a little unsure where the opening is working out, how it is, and um, my normal stuff led to a completely winning position. So I think that is a good place to stop for day two. We end day two at 2,400, so I'm 24 points away. Uh, definitely a tough 24 points, but feeling pretty good.